Well, hello, YouTubers. So today, I'm going to melt some gold. I've got a, a vial here with a few grams of uh, very pure gold powder in it. This gold was extracted from electronic scrap, and it's been uh, precipitated twice now. So it's, it's very pure stuff, very clean gold, ready to be melted down into a button. Now, I've done this quite often. But I haven't filmed it yet because I'm never sure how this is going to turn out. This is a, it's going to be very, very bright. So I don't know how the, the, the camera is going to pick it up or what it's going to pick up or if it's going to pick up anything other than a big, uh, big overexposed washout. So we'll see. I'll give it a shot and see. You know, this video may never make it onto YouTube. What equipment do we need to melt gold? Well, we need to melt dish. And this is a ceramic melt dish. You can get these fairly cheap off of uh, Amazon or eBay or wherever. I believe it's made out of aluminum oxide. It's very resistant to heat. Very resistant to heat because we're going to get it really hot. And you need some borax. And uh, I'm using anhydrous borax here. You can use the regular borax you get at the uh, hardware store or the grocery store. But it's not anhydrous, and the problem with that is it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of expand like popcorn when you put the heat to it and tend to fly all over the place. But you can use it. You just have to be prepared for that to happen. Then once it expands, it's kind of anhydrous then, and it, it'll just melt down. When you get a melt dish, new, it doesn't have any kind of coating on it. And you need to glaze it with the borax. That way the gold won't stick to it. You don't want the gold to stick to it. So basically, you just heat the dish up really hot with a torch and sort of sprinkle borax on it. And the borax will melt and it'll, it'll glaze the dish with a nice coating. Um, it, it almost looks like um, the glaze on pottery. And I think borax is one of the main components of glaze for pottery. And like I said, the anhydrous borax works better. And we're going to need a torch. Here's my little... Now, pardon the lighting, it's terrible, I know. Here's my little oxygen acetylene torch set. Now, you might think, well, that's expensive. I don't want to run out and spend that much money. Well, I don't pay retail for anything. I got this as a pawn shop. And it's got a price on it, $149.99. That's not what I paid for it. First off, they were having 20% day at the pawn shop. And you'll find a lot of pawn shops do that. They'll they'll have a 20 or 25 percent off day when everything is on sale, just to reduce their inventory. So watch for that to happen. And then if you pay cash, a lot of them will negotiate with you on the price. So I got this for I think under 100 bucks, and the tanks were full. I was shocked. I, I turned on the valves, and it's like the pressure gauges went up, and I'm like, holy cow, the tanks are full. The price is low. I'm going to buy this right now. So I've had this for probably six months. And I don't know how many gold melts I've done. And the pressure in the tanks has hardly dropped at all. Because it doesn't take that much doesn't take that much gas to, uh, to melt a little bit of gold. It's fairly quick. Just takes a few minutes and doesn't use that much gas. Um, I did go in to buy a, a mask. So it makes it easier for me to see what I'm doing because, like I said, it's very bright, and with the with the the mask with the the green glass in it, it makes it easier to see what I'm doing. So that's that's pretty much all. Um, you know, there's a I got a a pair of pliers with the bent tips for manipulating the uh, the melt dish better, and I got a pair of hemostats here. And they'll be handy for plucking the gold bead out once it solidifies. And that's pretty much it. You know, that's there's not a lot of equipment required. I've got a uh, a ceramic fiber mat here that that it's about an inch thick, and it will protect my workbench from the heat, so the heat won't get through and burn the workbench. And it works great. And that's about it. You know, I've got a beaker back there with water. I can drop the. Uh, gold bead in once it's melted to uh, cool it off and uh, yeah I think we're ready to go let me get set up I'll try 
filming this with the uh, with the camera on the tripod because I'm going to need both hands to do this and we'll see what it looks like it may not like I said it may not make it onto YouTube all right we'll see how this goes first thing I'm going to do is put the gold in the melt dish close to five grams next I'm going to put a little bit of borax on top of it the borax is going to melt first and it's going to act like a bit of glue to hold the uh, pile of gold together it's also once it melts it's going to help transmit the heat to the gold It'll act like a little bit of a flux All this flammable stuff out of the way. Put my goggles on. Light the torch. Don't need a huge flame for this. Because if you get a huge powerful flame, you're just going to blow the gold all over the place. We don't need a huge flame. I'm going to slowly preheat things and get the get the borax to melt. I hope this is showing up on video to some extent. It's very bright. And once the borax is melted, it's kind of acting as a glue to hold the pile of gold powder together, I can take the torch in tighter without worrying too much about blowing the gold all over the place. So the borax is melted. The gold is actually starting to melt too. Like I said up front, this process doesn't take very long. This oxyacetylene torch is very hot and it gets the gold up to melting temperature very quickly. We change hands with the torch. So I've got a bead of gold in there, but I've got a lot of gold just all over the place so I'm going to move the puddle of gold around to sort of assimilate all the other gold in there kind of like like an amoeba move it around to uh, capture all the other gold it's in there and I think I got the bulk of it though it's hard to tell with the mask on all right so there we got a nice bead of gold melted. And that didn't take very long at all. So we'll let the gold solidify, which also doesn't take very long. There it goes. Pull it up out of the liquid borax. And put it in there to a uh, Cool. And there we have a nice bead of gold. Now it's got a little bit of borax residue on it. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take and I'll make a, a weak, um, weak um, sulfuric acid mixture. I'll just take this, this water and I'll put a few squirts of, uh, a few pipette squirts of sulfuric acid in it and I'll boil it for a few minutes and that will take all of the uh, all of the borax residue there you can see some borax on the back of it and that will take all the borax residue off and make the gold really really shiny so I think I'll do that because this it's got kind of a kind of a dark film on it and it's got a lot of borax stuck on the bottom of it Ooh, that is a heavy bead that's a heavy bead I'll uh, I'll weigh it up after I clean it up and we'll see what we got Okay, I got the uh, I got the gold button in the beaker and it's on the heat. I just turned the heat on, so it's warming up. I'm going to put a couple of uh, pipettes of concentrated sulfuric acid in the cooling water I used, and just make a weak sulfuric acid mix. And I'm going to let that heat up and boil. 
and you'll be amazed at the difference in what the gold button looks like after a boil in dilute sulfuric acid. All that uh, stuck on borax, a dark film on the top of it, and all the stuck on borax on the bottom is all going to be gone, and the gold's going to be really, really shiny. It's impressive. It's 24 karat gold after all. It ought to be shiny. It shouldn't look dingy. So this will fix it up. Uh, it was showing up in the video. Okay, yeah, I see it. There's a couple of little tiny balls of gold left in the bottom of the melt dish. They're very tiny, you know. I don't know. Hundredth of a gram, maybe. So, when I was uh, swirling that uh, ball of gold around, I didn't quite assimilate all the little bits of gold in there. It's okay. They'll still be there the next time I melt the gold. And, um they can get incorporated into it, into the next bead I melt. So they're not going anywhere. They're stuck in the solidifying uh, borax. So they're going to be there in the bottom of the melt dish until next time. Not a big deal. All right, this button's been in the hot dilute sulfuric acid solution for a while while I've been off doing other things. Let's have a look at it. Get a hold of it. Oh yeah. See how sh if it's showing up on camera how shiny that is. It's gorgeous. It had that sort of a uh, black film on top of it and it had a bunch of uh borax stuck on the back of it. Now it's it's just gorgeous. All right. Let me rinse it off and go weigh it up. So, here's our little bead of gold on the scale. 5.03 grams. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. No. Nope. Weight's bouncing around a little bit. Can't believe it's getting heavier. Yep. Nope. Up, down, up, down. Nope. Back to 5.03. So that's probably a good average for it. So let me add some of these to it. from previous melts. So that's 12.05 grams. 12.08. And again it's bouncing around some. 12.08. 05. 06. Okay, it's going to bounce around a little bit. But a little over 12 grams. And the gold price has been hovering a little above $45 a gram. So there's not quite $600 worth of gold here. But, uh, that's good, because I haven't spent $600 to get this gold, so that's excellent. Actually making a little bit of a profit on this hobby venture, so that's great. So what am I going to do with this gold? I mean, aside from just collect it as bullion and put it in a safe deposit box. Well, I know of a uh, jewelry shop that uh, does custom work and buys gold. So I think I shall take this stuff over there and see if we can work a deal. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Thanks for watching.